Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Stephen Adams Show, with Ben, the intern, and special guest, Jake Shackelford. Hey, Jake. Hey, How's Jake. Going, guys? We have beer. It's going good. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, so Jake is a special guest today. To um, so, so first, let's introduce Jake. Um, Jake is a, a cool dude who knows some, some things about Intune. Uh, watched him um, on not watched him, watched him, stalker, he watched him, but like wow. um, uh, on the, uh, on Discord and Slack, so the Win Admins uh, Discord uh, channel, that's where uh, me and Jake met, and then we've uh, met up in real life at uh, some conferences, at the MMS conference, and um, anyway, uh, every time I'm on Discord, Jake's just throwing out uh, Intune knowledge and all kinds of cool things. Uh, Jake also helps run uh, com. the uh, um, community blog that we started to encourage folks to come and just write things. If you want to come and get mentored on writing and um, sharing what you know, it doesn't have to be anything that someone else hasn't written. Just come and write if you want to just start getting getting familiar with blogging and things. Um, so anyway, J Jake helps uh, helps run that, and he also writes for it. He's in the running for winning a puppy this year. Uh, our mascot is a dog, and I told him if he wrote all the enough blogs this year, he'd win a dog. So he's he's bought into it. Don't tell him there's no dog. Um, but hey, Jake, welcome to the party. Glad to be here, guys. Uh, so Jake, um, what what are you gonna? Uh, what, well, so tell us a little bit about yourself um, that I didn't already just make up on the fly there. I think you pretty much told my life story there. I mean, uh, <laughs> as, as far as a tech career goes. Um, but no, I wanted to walk you guys through basically updating group tags uh, inside of Intune, because at least from what I know, not many vendors are doing that for you now. So it's yeah. kind of a pain. It seems uh, look, group tags are a really, really good uh, management tool. It's literally just a label that you can use. Uh, and now with the advent that we can actually modify them whenever we want, uh, it becomes even more valuable. Um, and it's crazy that uh, other vendors don't seem to be using it as much as uh, as I see value in it as well. Um, yeah, agreed. And just just to clarify, so when we're saying vendors aren't using it, we're talking about when you contract with your vendor, uh, your hardware vendor, to pre-upload your hardware hash for autopilot, uploading the hash into your tenant. Um, there's an option in the API to add that group tag but they're not using it. Um, and so this is a way to be able to do it after the fact to help make sure that um, your devices are being tagged properly and grouped properly um, Correct. as you move yeah. into in, uh, autopilot so you can target specific profiles to them um, and and all sorts of, you know, all the things you get by being able to segregate your machines into different useful uh, groupings. Yeah, exactly. And so, so to, uh, to, do this, uh, or so I guess at the time of this um, video, there will be a blog that comes out at the same time. So we'll have a link below so you can follow along with that um, as you watch this. So uh, Jake, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and share the share your screen um, just to kind of walk us through the the blog post to begin with, and then we're gonna do the walk Adam through it um, routine here and see if see if we can um, if we can actually reproduce what you're what you're demoing. Yeah, I got you. So for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're just going to walk you guys through creating a, dyna a dynamic device group. Pretty, like I said, straightforward. Uh, not anything difficult there. And then we're going to register an app um, in the com in Azure AD that's able to access that information via the Graph API and setting the correct permissions so that it can update your group tag. And again, pretty straightforward. And then we'll get into the root of it, which is the script where you add all that information and then you're off to the races. Awesome. All right. Um, and you know, Jake, I'm going to need you to send me the, um, or send me the, just send me that link so I'll have it on my side to uh, run the scripts and things. There we go. All right. Awesome. So, cool. So that's kind of just um, that's our agenda. That's where we're headed. I know. I know. You are on the right channel. This is Intune Training. We do have a plan this time. Don't get used. To it. <laughs> we haven't actually tested it, but we at least have a target. So, 
conceptually, this is going to work very, very well. Adam has a lot of uh, faith in me. I don't know where he found it, but... I have a lot of VMs. I have no faith. We could potentially do the automation around the the purchase order being NA. Or, you know, no. um, Just as a thing to sort of show that that's a value. Yeah. So let's Let's proceed with yeah. the uh with your instructions jake now that we all right used off for the last half hour okay so let's head over to device management that microsoft.com you mean endpoint the endpoint that, I, i'm still i'm old school i guess you know the portal dot yeah, yeah. Dot yeah. yeah. Intune portal. <laughs> for education right you yeah, know? yeah 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 aka dot ms slash uh we're actually gonna go uh, we're gonna create <laughs> stop trying to make gonna... it a thing it's not a thing it is. We're going to create the uh, <laughs> dynamic device group first. So if we head down to groups under favorites, and we're going to select new group once we uh, get it loaded here. Good stuff. Feel free to give it a fancy group name. Uh, whatever. I do, I personally do Intune Windows Device Enrollment. Yep. <laughs> okay. Got it. And membership type, we're going to change to a dynamic device. I will send you the query for that. And so, by the way, there's an edit button to do advanced editing. So if you already have the query, you can just put it. And that's going to be the easiest way to do it as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Now, one thing to talk about, the reason we're doing it this way as well is that you don't have to. Yep. You need to put on the blog, you need to make sure that you put those quotes in a code block because ah, those yes. won't work that way. So on the, uh, so here. Yep, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah. That. yeah, so you know those in a code block because that puts fancy quotes and that will not work. Even though this is fancy devices, we do not need fancy quotes. <laughs> All right, save. Create. All right, well, let me, let's talk about it for a moment. What do we have? Okay, so, so yeah. The reason uh, we're gonna we're even going about and doing these group tags to begin with is traditionally your hardware vendor is gonna recommend just adding the purchase order uh, identifier yeah. to this dynamic query. Well, you can only this query can only be so long to begin with, and on top of that, anytime you're adding a new rule like for the syntax, you run the risk of just completely destroying your group, yeah, which can mess up all your uh enrollment profiles which isn't necessarily the end of the world but it's not if you can just set this leave it never have to change it i think that's a win-win for everybody yeah i have actually run into that myself uh, quite a few times where i'll set up a dynamic group works really well and then i want to tweak the tweak the rule Mm -hmm. just slightly and then it just never reapplies um, yep. I've, I've always found the easiest way to uh redo a dynamic group is to literally recreate it Yep. So I don't know whether that's I obviously it's 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 obviously a fault with the uh with the the interface a little bit, but um yeah it's it's quite frustrating. Did I somehow fail to save the group? Did you hit? Yeah. I don't think you hit create. Yeah. Let's let's try that one again. Yeah. All right. Group. Well, mm-hmm. You got this. I believe in you. And I know some people out there are probably uh, wondering, like, well, why, why don't you use the catch-all ZTDID, and it'll just catch any device yes, that's in Jake, your portal. Why don't we? You know, th- and that's fine and dandy. However, if you have more than one profile you want to assign to your devices, like, for yeah. instance, maybe you want a kiosk machine that's self-deploying. Well, if you have that catch-all, you're not really going to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so the way that I work around that myself is that I'll have that catch-all group as my baseline all devices go into that bucket and then i have other groups that are just for the you know um uh, dynamic group tags that i that i want to that i want to ring fence and things like that mm-hmm. um, but obviously it depends on uh, where you want to deploy your autopilot policies and that sort of stuff too exactly uh, and then that comes down to like it comes it comes back to the whole conversation of do i deploy to all users or all devices or not Okay. And as, as soon as you start going and saying, well, I'm going to create that generic ZTDID group, you're assuming that it's going to go to all users. And you can't assume that. No. All right. I'm getting them going. Sweet. 
seem to have missed one. Okay, that one. Okay. All right, so those are all going back up in the meantime. All right, so we have a group. Now what? All right, so next we're going to head over to portal.azure.com, and we're going to create an app that will actually let us access the Graph API to make these changes. This is one of the more, uh, it's it's actually quite simple once you've done it a few times, but this is one of the things that stumps a lot of people when they're getting into uh, programmatically working with anything in Azure. Um, so this will be anyone that's anyone that's wanted to do this, pay attention because it's it's very easy, but it's uh, it for some reason has a stigma about it. Yeah. And, and also we're gonna head probably over. have to have like some permissions to do this, and so probably, yeah. yep, yep, apparently. You're going to want to head over to app registrations, not enterprise applications. Yeah. And we're going to do a new registration. Feel free to give it a fancy name. And you can leave everything else default. I like the, the name. Perfect. Hmm. And then you're going to, under manage, there's an API permission section. We're going to select that. Up, down. Down, you got Boom. it. Awesome. We're going to add a permission. And we're going to select the very top one, the big one that says Microsoft Graph. You can't miss it. Almost I would have you might be able to miss it. Ignore all the big <laughs> stuff. And we're going to select application permissions. Now, here we go. Here's a question for you while, while we're looking at this stuff. Why are we selecting application permissions and not uh, delegated permissions? Uh, because the app itself is going to be the one that's signing in. Yeah. So we'll see. Sure. Yeah, we'll see why why that is the case once we actually look at the code. Um, but it is a good one. So application runs uh, on behalf of you and does things. Uh, oh, sorry, not on behalf of you. It, it, it's a it's a daemon service, so it doesn't actually need your credentials. Um, we're giving an implicit access to these these things to run without our credentials. And now that we have that selected, you're going to want to scroll down to device management service config. Bottom one there, yep, you got it. And we're going to do read, write all because obviously read all isn't going to let us update what we need to. And then select add permission. And once we do that, you'll notice next to add permission, we have grant admin consent for Intune.training, which you can select there or you can do it at the top. Uh, up to the left a bit, right next to where it says add permission. We'll check mark. I can't, I can't read. There okay, it is. Hey, it. look at that guy. <laughs> All right. Like that. Yeah. Hey, just just highlight there. That's the one we're looking for. All right. So just to let you know, if you do not do this, I'm it's practicing nice on Zoom because you're not. You you never gave the app the permission to actually do that. Yep. So the the consequence of not allowing it here uh, means that the first time that you actually try to authenticate, um, especially if you're using uh, application uh, permissions it will fail. Um, alternatively, there are ways that you can uh, get it to interactively uh, allow that permission on the first attempt as well, especially if you're using the new mCell um, auth libraries. Yep. Uh, next, we're going to navigate to certificates and secrets. And we're going to generate a new client secret. Feel free to give it another fancy name and select your expiration date. For testing, I usually do never. Okay. And you're going to want to copy that key to a notepad. All and right. We're going to go back to the overview of the app and we're going to copy the application client ID as well. Right. And then we're going to head back to AAD. Do a little bit more zoom at that one. Application. Correct, you got it. Okay. And then you're going to navigate to custom domains and you're going to want to get your dot on Microsoft domain name. Copy that guy. Or and from there, that's all the information you need before we start running the script. We should probably check to see if those machines have shown up yet. They have, but I still don't think the purchase order has come through. Um, but that's okay because you know, for this scenario, we can just say that we're we're looking for devices without a purchase order ID. Um, I will send stickers to the first person who comments in the uh, comment field. 
uh, how to get that <laughs> purchase order ID uploaded so that people won't get stuck doing this. Hold on. Oh. I have stickers. Sysman Squad, Intune Training. I don't know if these are showing up or blurring or not, but <laughs> uh, I have stickers. I'll send you a pack of stickers. Uh, You're you that whole pack, not just one that. sticker. Well, I mean, yeah, like, exactly. a, you know, a modest, a modest envelope of stickers. Anything that a single out. a single uh, stamp will carry. How about <laughs> that? Perhaps a baker's dozen. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right. So, so I guess I haven't read the blog yet, Joe, Jake. So we are headed in a direction to do a thing. So the idea here is that we're going to programmatically with a script um, take uh, upload or change the change the information or add the um, group, tag group tag to these devices yeah. using a script. And so the idea was that in order to do that without having to put credentials in every time, we we created that API to be able to schedule this to auto run. Is that what we're doing? Uh, correct. The way I have my script set up, it does prompt you to input the purchase order ID. Um, this is mainly assuming that you're ordering in bulk. Um, so that way, you, you obviously could hard code that if you want, but yeah. Okay, uh, so this is kind of like a run on demand type situation yeah um and so could you if you wanted to run this without the app id could you run this manually with just your ga credentials or whatever you'd have to you can yeah but you'd have to generate an api key for your even for your own account to be able to do this. Well, yeah, so you still yeah. need to authenticate, right? Um, mm -hmm. So what, what the first chunk of the code is doing is just getting that that auth token, um, and then the rest is just a, a quite a simple uh, graph call. Um, and so what we're doing here is uh, instead, of, instead of providing a username and a password, which in theory probably has MFA and can't be programmatically uh, mm -hmm. accessed without an interactive uh, session, um, we're just going, look, in, uh, we inherently trust um, that this application with this client secret, this, uh, this role, um, let's just let it do its thing. Obviously, right. in a production scenario, you'd probably have your client secret hidden in a secret or in a key vault or something. Yep, exactly. Um, because, you know, yeah. Secrets. Yeah. Got it. Uh, and then you'll notice uh, on line six there, I have a group tag. And at least for me, I'm assigning the group tag of just standard machine. Let's call uh, it fancy that's, machine. That's my base. Fan, I like it. Oh well, it's, it's so yeah. Okay. Um, now this won't work because we have the wrong rule in our group that we made. Correct. Yeah. Oh, so we're gonna have sure, to go sure. back and change that. Because right. he had standard computer, and I was wondering what the standard computer, what yeah. like where does that where is that value stored? What's that coming from? Mm -hmm. um, so there it is. So a standard machine. Sorry, I've got it. My browser zoomed in, so everybody. So we're going to change this to fancy machine. I'm going to have a discussion while we're while we're spinning circles around that uh, that dynamic group query as well. I'm just bringing up my one because uh, there is a couple of ways. Uh, the uh, you know very much the Microsoft standard. There is there's multiple ways to do this, um, and I'd just like to know why. you did it that way um where are we going are we waiting for you to think or are we uh waiting? you're waiting for me to paste a thing uh if we wait okay. for you to think let's we'd check, be here for a while check. okay check. um oh hey jake i gotta fix your code here there you go all right it's better. <laughs> oh there we go <laughs> <laughs> typo typo in the code all right uh in the chat over here okay so yeah. all i'm all i'm sort of getting at here is uh the query that I use is more, uh, it's specific to looking at the group ID, which is known as the order ID. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the other one uh, is just any physical ID. So any tag on the device that is labeled fancy machine. So that could be the group tag. It could be the product ID. It could be whatever. Um, they both work. No, one's not better than the other. It's just to show that there are multiple ways to do this. And you could have 
multiple fields. So you could have order ID of blah and then purchase order ID of that's uh, correct. ABC. Yeah. And you can build rules based on that if you needed to. That's right. What is the um what is the that's like wildcard uh, basically? Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. All right. So I mean you could substitute that in and you could say any name equals or whatever, right? But by putting the putting the blank here, you're putting you're telling yeah. it that to fill that in with any of the properties on the on the object, right? That's correct. Yep. Because I mean, in both in both the scenarios, what we're actually looking for is that string. So we're not actually looking for uh, a property per se or a value of a property. We're just looking for the presence of that content. Um, okay. So that's you know, we're just going just show me anything if it matches that string. Anything where it matches. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so then to block this out, so then here's our variables that we set. So we put our client ID in that we from the API, um, or the app that we just made, and the client secret and the tenant name, and then everything else is the stuff that you're going to copy and paste out of the blog. So the resource is going to graph, the group tag is the fancy machine, and yep. um, then we're going to stop and we're going to prompt for the purchase order ID, which in this case is going to be NA, right? Yeah, uh, it might be NA or it might be null. null. It depends yeah. on what the back end is. So we might have to modify this a little bit. We might need to we probably might validate maybe just that change by going line seven here, to be purchase right? order ID equals I mean, null. Not here, here, but the graph is over here. Yeah. 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 Um, how do we get there? AKA.ms slash G preview. That's this is how I get there. I go to the Google Bing <laughs> and then this is why I work so slow because this is I don't I need to sign in as well. Yeah. I did not cancel. <clears throat> I did not. I did not cancel. <sighs> well, Jake, you did say this was only going to take like five minutes, so it's good. I wasn't we planning on going stretch it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not signing uh, in because I have pop-up blockers going on here. That'll do it. Always allow. Why? Why you do this? I mean, seriously, what the heck, guys? This is ridiculous. All right. Yep. We're maybe I'll there. maybe I'll edit this out. Doubt it though. Sorry. <laughs> You can use that little scrolly thing at the bottom. Fast forward. Okay, so, all right, so what do we got? Purchase order identifier is blank. It's, it is okay. blank. So yeah, that should be, that'll be null. Okay. Um, all right, so Jake, will your, when we prompt for that, okay, so it'll accept anything that we put or nothing mm -hmm. that we put. Um, okay, so uh, so then the rest of the the code is so this is the the JSON body that we're sending in as into the rest method that we're going to call, and then we're calling the um, this is to get the auth token and yeah. then and save that, and then this is the actual URL that we want want to work from, and we're going to basically uh, send, grab all the devices that are send this data into this yep. method. And then return that result back out, and then uh, from there we will get the device list, and then uh, update the group tag with whatever the group tag is that we specified, which is fancy machine, and then write each of those back into the graph and sync our devices. Yep, you got it. Woohoo! Hey, all right, here we go. F5. All right, null. So should I do null? Uh, it's probably not going to work, but yeah. I can just enter. I would just enter, happens. yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Hey, jackpot. All right. Now, and... that last line with the sync, that does air out, but it does actually force the sync. If you go to the portal, you'll see that it is syncing. 
And then too I was many just requests. Some weird thing that I, know, I actually yeah. ran into no, this I get it. Why to, as well I'm used is to that, that if, you hit, <laughs> if you hit sync repeatedly, um, the, it the will key... throw an error saying, "Yeah, dude, I'm doing it. Like, mm. calm down. You don't yep. need to keep doing this." So one of the yes. key things that one of the key things I told you, you need to do. The other. You did. Thank you, Adam. Um, is make your just make the sync happen at the end of the script and not after each. Uh, input. It does happen at the end of the script. Oh, really? It's after, yeah, it's outside of the loop of the. Okay, script. interesting. It's yeah. probably because so, we've been uh, yeah. hitting it's, it yep. via the UI. Yeah. Um, constantly for like the last half hour. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But like it's, I said, so, it errors uh, out, but it does actually start the sync. So. so Jake, that's where you put put the whole thing in a try catch statement and just hide that error. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a feature. <laughs> it is. Um, you know, it's um, I as a side tangent, I ha was working on production, trying to get uh, my uh, enrollment policies working, and like a week ago, I uh, added another policy, added a new device. I was trying to do Azure AD join only, and I signed it, and then nada. Like none of the stuff would update, and I delete, I unassigned everything, and then I came back a week later, and then still nothing. They were still all assigned, and I deleted the the uh, profiles, and still wouldn't. And finally, I ended up trying to, or I uploaded a CSV for a new machine, yeah. and that finally kickstarted it to make it work, but it was stuck. Yeah, I could not get it to sync at all. Every time I hit sync, it would give me the same error code that we're seeing yeah, yeah. here. Um, and it was just, I mean, I, I opened a Premiere ticket, just try to get some help on it. And it I uploaded the CSV file and it unstuck it and I closed the ticket. That's crazy. Um, so that's the way it works. You have to open the ticket before you can solve mm -hmm. it yourself generally. Now, right. I have noticed that the actual update of it showing in the portal does take a decent amount of time. Yeah, this is very much like in any uh, sort of backend stuff here. It, it can take up to 15 minutes to actually reflect uh, in the UI. Doesn't necessarily mean it hasn't applied. Um, it just, it just unfortunately, because uh, the one thing that I always forget is that everything that we're doing here is still happening in the store for business. Um, just because we see it here doesn't mean that it's changed. Um, and that process was painfully slow. Um, so. I'm just going to keep doing it here. It's faster, but yes. it's just going to, yeah. It's, it's doing it. It's we already gotta... sinking. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah, but the proof here is that it did tell us that it did write these attributes to the device. Correct. Um, for us. Okay, so we can either just cut and then fast forward into time once this sinks and come back in, or we can just keep chatting away. What else do we want to talk about while we're in here? How are those devices awesome. going? The group tags? Oh, they're, they're in. They're in. Yeah, Sorry, check I, it out. I've, been sitting on, uh, I've been sitting on share screen this whole time waiting. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, so there we go. Fancy machine. Awesome. Now Fancy. let's go Let's go back to that actual group and see if those machines got added to yeah. Yeah. it. Right. That's not where I want to go with this. Device uh, membership members, yep. Awesome. Look at that. So from this point, now it's just a matter of you know going to your deployment profiles and assigning that profile to this group, and now all those devices should get your enrollment information. And that's actually that's a really good one to talk about as well, uh, because so if you've got multiple autopilot uh, deployment profiles, which we which we do here, uh, and you have multiple dynamic groups. Uh, with each of those groups having uh, the, the deployment profile assigned to it, um, one of the really important things that you need to uh, watch is in the device list, you need to make sure that uh, the the autopilot uh, field is is set to assigned. Um, so, I mean, we're going we're gonna to do it now, so we'll be able to, I mean, it's, it's probably going to be a bit too slow for the video, but you'll be able to see what happens. It actually goes to unassigned, uh, by default, and then it goes to uh, updating, and then finally assigned. assigned um, yeah. You cannot do anything until it says assigned, and mm -hmm. this can take some time. Um, this is one of those amazing uh, inventions of IT where just go get a coffee. Yep. 
just just take you know take a break i have seen good. it take up to an hour in some yeah. cases um, yeah. The minimum the minimum expectation is it's between ten to fifteen minutes. I've seen it run faster, but well, it looks like it's already got the profiles. So like, it'll yeah. be a def- it'll be a default one to like the baseline yeah. policy. Uh, yeah. But now that we've updated oh. it, look at that. Yeah, look it'll be that. the one that we previously assigned using uh, ZTRD. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh yeah, yeah, that's ah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I need to go remove that assignment. No, 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 probably. No, yeah. uh, oh, actually, no. What you need to do is get you need two to or do an exclusion. Yeah, need, yeah, just do an exclusion. Yep. Um, so I've actually just done this uh, for a client where um, during their testing, um, they wanted uh, some of their devices to be admins, some to not be admins, and they just wanted to be able to spin up as many machines uh, on each side of the fence just so that they could do testing. And we've done exactly what we're doing now. So um, yep. one group gets. <laughs> One group gets the standard user, but excludes the admin group, and then the other one is just the admin group. Yeah, and, and the important thing to make sure that you do in this sort of circumstance is you exclude the uh, policy, exclude the group from the policy you don't want to apply to. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get to the point where if you're using dynamic groups, there'll be in multiple groups, and it may come up and have, uh, it will say unassigned because. Mm it will be excluded from both of those policies, which yes, is a yeah. good thing because it's better than having two autopilot policies assigned to the one device because it will cause issues yeah, yeah. and conflicts. Um, so again, yeah, this is probably not going to be great, uh, great watching, no. great, yeah. great viewing material. Sorry. But what you'll, that's okay. Watch so what you'll do is when you get to that point, it will uh, switch back to updating and then it will eventually be assigned. So you just need to uh, really, really keep an eye on that um, because that's, I mean, it's one way to show that it's working, um, but it's yep. also just that's your that's your sort of meter to to know that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, and you know, to that point, the thing I brought up earlier about how how we were stuck that's that was the like the behavior was I kept autopiloting a machine with the wrong profile because it yep, never yep. would update, it, um, even though I had clearly unassigned it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we've we've. Uh, gone well well beyond our um thing but just just uh, in in tune training style i want to show you a successful demo <laughs> uh here so here we go so profile yeah. status assigned awesome and uh let's click over and see look at that that's the new awesome. one that i assigned to it and there we go so success jake see we just need to bring more guest hosts on and not ben and uh we'll get there right <laughs> No, wait, wait. No, Ben's st- No, it's us. Dang it, Steve. It's me and you. That it's uh, we're the problem. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, Why I appreciate the time, guys. Thanks yes. for the invite. All right, uh, and just sure. um, click below for all the things we're gonna have. Jake's all the Jake's info and how you can find him. Um, check out Sysman Squad. Check out uh, the uh, aka.ms slash winadmins. You can also check out aka.ms slash i dot t. That'll be a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us, Jake. We appreciate it, man. Thanks, Jake. anytime. Thanks, sure. hey, guys. So, Jake, uh, all right. So, I'll put you on the spot, Jake. You have been okay. dealing with uh, hardware vendors and um, getting them to sync autopilot in and all that sort of stuff. So, you've got some some experience in that uh, arena. So, let's talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna stop sharing so that our faces show okay. up as we talk. So that'll be easier. Uh, so traditionally, I was doing everything with Config Manager. Uh, we had was our rep uh, machines. Uh, I won't get into the fact that quality seems to be going down, so we ended up deciding <laughs> to switch. Um, and we decided to switch with the move to autopilot. Um, and just switching it in general, as far as like from a pricing standpoint, when you order directly, you see pretty massive discounts comparative to. For example, I know mm-hmm. in our case it was something along the lines of off list price. Um, and on top of that, you know, then I just Jake, I'm probably gonna have to bleep every vendor yeah, name that you throw I, out. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know, you Sorry. might as well just cut that whole section. Um, it's fine. But, I'll bleep it. It'll but, be fine. <laughs> um, but you know, the big name vendors out there, you're gonna have a much you know easier time. Um, getting the stuff uploaded. I know that Microsoft is working or some of the vendors are working on a way for other vendors, smaller vendors to be able to just scan a barcode and then yep. they can upload it later on. Yep. 
Um, but that's still, you know, it's in the works. It's not necessarily out there yet. Um, but I mean, that's been my experience for the most part. No vendor that I know of will, to this day, will add group tag. Some vendors have it planned out for the future, mm. even though it's been available for over a year in the API. Um, hopefully we'll see it soon so we don't have to do scripts like this. So I know that um, at our company, we are, I mean, so I think I've mentioned this before, like, so we are on the cusp of moving to Intune. We are still mm -hmm. in the early stages of, of migrating. Um, I just did my first Azure AD join uh, VM yesterday um, in our production environment um, because we've had just technical challenges that have made it impossible to do it. It's not like, yeah. oh, no, they're just saying, no, you can't. It's there are technical things that we're getting through. So, um, uh, but what we're finding is we're talking to our vendors and the vendors are saying, well, uh, if you want to do autopilot, um, then, or if you want us to register with autopilot, here's there's a fee associated with it. And, um, but what comes with that fee we're finding is that there's a guaranteed, um, you know, no bloatware added to that so, image that comes to you. And so you're paying extra for yeah. a clean machine but I think that some of the vendors just potentially are going to will do that for you. But this locks yeah, us so in. So the and actual says, we're going to guarantee we're going to get this feature updated version of yeah. the OS every time and have a guarantee. So we're paying for that extra um, care. Almost I guess. every vendor that I've talked to, they have a zero dollar SKU to just upload <laughs> your hardware hash information into your yeah. into your tenant. It's the the extra fee comes in when you're adding that clean image. Yeah, yep. so I've run into a couple of clients that that have that exact same relationship with their hardware vendor. Where, yep, the the you know the the hardware hash is being imported. There's no questions. Happy to do that. Um, but they are still coming with with the fat client of Office installed. Um, and they're just like, well, how do I do this? And like, call up your hardware vendor, tell them that you're interested in the clean build. They have it. If they haven't told you about it, it's because you haven't asked. Um, at right. this point in time, in the the worst year uh, that I've ever lived. Um, this is a thing that just exists, right? You can just ask your hardware vendor. It doesn't matter how big or small your company is or how big or small you perceive your company to be. That conversation has been had hundreds of times. It is not something strange for them. That request is not weird. Yeah. Now, what you may find is that your sales rep may be unfamiliar with it, with it or, or with the process. But press them on it, ask them for it. It does exist. They all are doing it. And if they aren't doing it, then you either are not buying enterprise hardware or you need to get a new hardware vendor because all yeah. the major brands are participating in this because this is where it's headed. That's um, yeah. so bear in yeah. mind, Bear in mind when you're getting those clean images from a lot of vendors, it will most likely not be the latest version that's out. For example, yeah. Um, you know, 2004 is the latest uh, version to date. 2004. Most machines, 2004 or 20H1, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most vendors are going to be shipping 1909. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I'm still, uh, I'm still using uh, dog fooding my own module uh, to get the latest version of Win 10 on client machines, just because it is the quickest way uh, mm. that I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, you know roll the dice on is this machine going to be at at the level set that i want it to be i just go look the hardware's there or the hardware hash has been uploaded plug this thing in let's just start fresh less than five minutes yeah. you're going to have the version that you want and just use this as your workflow um, and that's yeah. been pretty successful so far yeah and the so the the thing i mean i guess the the biggest thing about that clean image um scenario is it addresses some of the com the conversations that I know that we heard at least early on from people that said, mm -hmm. yeah, but it, it comes with all that bloatware. The reason we re-image it is to get rid of the bloatware. We can't do autopilot because of bloatware. It's like, no, 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 no. You, yeah, we, we you agree. That's the that right that. thing. Mm -hmm. yes. But you need to, you need to get, you need to start with the right thing um, to, to be able to get the right, uh, yeah. the right and image. Yep. I'm sort of baffled by that. Cause I'm still, look, I'm still having that conversation a lot more regularly than I'd like to be having at this point. Yep. But when I simply say, just re-image the machine, they go, but I do, I hit reset all the time. I'm like, no, 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 mm. reset. Yeah. Like actually, re-image, like, wipe, wipe away. Start yep. fresh. 
Um, yeah. I, it, it just seems strange to me that that's not like the first thing that you do. Well, but okay. So if you flip it around and you say, okay, we've been, you know, okay, we've been promoting autopilot and saying autopilot is this thing that we need to be doing. Sure. And um, if if the idea is we should never have to image a machine again mm -hmm. because we're using autopilot, and yeah. then you're telling a customer, well, you should re-image it. Wait, why? I'm, sure. Okay. I'm resetting so it because you said the way to re-image is to reset because we're trying to like so, but you have to start from the clean. Exactly. Image. It's the conversation yeah. we had two weeks ago about the removing the inbox apps, where yes. the if if you run this if you run the PowerShell script to uh, and, and service your image and you remove those apps out of that image, if you reset, they're still gone. They never yeah. come back. Yeah, You're sure. not reinstalling. I mean, reset doesn't magically reinstall the OS for you. Yeah, it's, it's not cloud deploy. Yeah, it's not no, the yeah. same. Yeah, so. exactly. I just, yeah, uh, I guess everyone's been sold the idea of the zero touch uh, deployment solution. And the, the stark harsh reality is that you're probably going to need to do something with the machine initially. Um, if you don't have the hardware vendor putting in that hardware hash, you're probably going to need to do it yourself. If you don't have that relationship where you can get the enterprise ready uh, SKU of uh, Windows uh, on your machines, you're going to need to uh, scorch earth and start fresh. Um, that's not a necessarily a bad thing. Um, the conversations that I've been having generally boil down to, I want this to be completely zero touch. And then when you ask them what their current process is, they pull out this giant document with, you know, 108 steps. You're like, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get those and we're going to drop them down to two steps. And mm -hmm. they go, but that's not good enough. I'm like, it's okay. zero touch. Okay. But it's still better than where you are right now. So if you get to that point where you can um, speed up the process, you can provision and get ready a device, not necessarily uh, with all the software on it, but at least at the, you know, welcome to Intune.training, uh, you put in your credentials that's still better. That's a better position than you were in previously. From there, you can then look at, you know, how can we remove those two steps? But you've got to see the benefit of what we're doing. Yeah. And with all of this stuff, I mean, you know, we're, it's a journey. It's incremental improvements. Exactly. Um, you know, I see a lot of people that still will say, well, Intune, you know, it doesn't have feature parity or it's not this or that, and it doesn't yeah. do all the things. And it, you know, I, apples to apples, I can't do all the same controls and all the things. And it's more than, I mean, what the journey that we're on is more than, can I put windows on a box? Mm -hmm. The journey that we're on is, can we increase security, increase mobility, and decrease the you know IT uh, overhead required yeah. to for care and feeding of our entire organizational infrastructure for uh, for IT. I mean that's it's it's Azure. It's on-prem resources moving things to the cloud. It's it's setting up better security, setting up the uh, data uh, protection. It's setting yeah. up you know doing threat protection, trying to, I mean, how many big companies recently have we seen get hit with ransomware? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Why, why haven't you ramped up the, or, you know, increased the, the, the controls? Uh, you know, this whole idea of zero trust where you, you, I mean, we keep talking about this at my office and, uh, you know, it would be great to see this happen. But right now, you know, traditional offices, everybody's got a, a business network, internet or you know an ethernet connection at their desk or or wi-fi but mm -hmm. it's connected to the business network yeah all of those machines then are technically connected Trusted. directly to mm -hmm. servers yep. you know they're firewalled off and stuff but clearly we're seeing ransomware is making its way through and scorched earthing everything so it takes one machine with a with bad yep. configuration and you've let it through the door and yep. you've plugged it into your network and now you're trusting that all of your security software that's your perimeter protections are going to actually protect you i mean it's it's the it's the inside threat that you didn't perceive as a threat that exactly. really is is the issues right so take away your your business network and you put an internet connection at everyone's desk no one is connected to anyone except mm -hmm. through the cloud through the internet exactly. you don't have a, and then you get rid of vpn and say look i don't because vpn connects you back to the business network by the way so <laughs> 
And Zero that's, trust. that's actually where, where we're literally working Don't for trust you. your devices. Yeah. You just say, look, you, you can access, you, we, we will give you conditional access to things to protect uh, our yeah. business from you, whether you intended to do harm or not. Harm it or not. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's such a funny conversation because I, I, mean, I have it all the time where uh, security teams just will not understand that uh, what we're doing is uh, increasing security by not trusting the device at all. But then they turn around and say, well, that's not secure because we need to deploy device certificates so that they're trusted. Like, but we don't trust them. We don't want to trust them. I don't want it on the network. And they go, but that's not secure. Yeah, it's the fact secure. that you can have a yeah. you can have a security control that looks for your root cert on a machine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so all I have to do is get a root cert and put it on my machine, and then your security software is going to let me in. Yep. Okay, so uh, it, let's say are you doing SSL decryption on your on things? Mm. Well, if you are, what are you doing? You're re-encrypting that packet and sending it down to the client with a cert that you're attaching to it. Yep. Your business cert with a root cert chained to it. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is when you get prompted and says, hey, are you just, you know, go to go to an internet connection, let it prompt you, uh, uh, you know, check, click the, the lock button in the browser, and now you can download your root cert. Yep. Yeah, and save it to a machine, and now I can take that and put it anywhere. Yep. Wow, this isn't really safe, is it? Should you be relying on that? Yeah, no, uh, you you shouldn't. It's a yeah. It's a, it's a very interesting. I can't conversation. believe I'm talking about security. I hate security, but this it's, is really the reality of it. It's such right? a big topic now, especially. Yep. Yeah, it's the state of it's just the state of device management, right? We've gotten past the look. Autopilots for some people seems to be this big hurdle that you know everyone seems to focus on. Heck, even we look at uh, we look at the numbers on Intune dot training and. If we put autopilot in the name, it's going to be one of the most watched videos. Um, yeah. But that's the, the just the first step. Getting the devices enrolled is fine. What do you do after that? And that's why security yeah. is such a big thing because it's now in the house of end use compute. So it, this is for, for a lot of us. It's the first time that we have been sort of at the table with the security guys uh, because, you know, we've got the levers to, to settle this stuff up. And prior to that, it just wasn't something that we ever needed to think about. Yeah, because we're not. Yeah, if if you if you keep going down this this path, we're not putting agents on machines. We don't have yeah. infrastructure protecting us. Everything, all of those protections come in the form of the credentials of the user and how they're protected on that workstation, and that's that's it. And and you know, mm -hmm. so it's how you configure your cloud and how you configure that device now. But the the device, you know, we we've got to do some better. Yeah. We, a little bit, be a little bit smarter on how we're configuring these things, right? And yeah, they're adding more and more to the Intune portal every day. For yeah, exactly. Stuff, so. Yeah, the, I mean, the endpoint uh, security <clears throat> policies are fantastic as well. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, you we've, we've got that A5 license. Don't just enable all the defaults, though. Not <laughs> that the hard way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so while we're talking about groups for a minute, um, ran into a situation today where uh, I was trying to create groups in uh, so you know we're still dealing with i'm, I'm trying to mirror things between uh, on-prem and the cloud and so everything i'm doing there i'm doing here doing in into now as much as possible so created a custom all devices or all users group and uh so it's, it's just a an ad group with domain users from each yep, of our yep. domains mm -hmm. as members in it you get to azure and there are no members nobody's a member of it and it okay. doesn't work and i started looking into it and so i found other um groups that had uh nested had groups in them so 80 groups with an with an 80 group inside and don't i went through them groups. and they work, work. And yeah. please don't well, do nested groups yeah. well but it's nested so it's, groups it's groups, evil. hold on it's groups synced from existing ad groups on premises right yeah. so they're yeah. nested groups there and they're syncing to Azure, and so they're there. And so it's like, oh, well, I should just use that because, right, it makes sense. Let me use Well, so what I think I discovered is that domain users doesn't get synced. It turns it's That's all fair. users in Azure. But mm -hmm. so I couldn't, I can't use that AD group in Azure because mm -hmm. it has no members. So I had to recreate a different version of it with, I just used the Intune or the Azure all users and added it instead. Um, 
but I added all users to my custom group because I still want it to be a custom group. I don't yep. want to just add all users as the group. So question for you, why would you not just capture the UPN of the AD group that you want and then just import it in? It, that's when it was already imported because it was an, uh, a sync account. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Very it's part good. of Azure AD Connect. So it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. synced. The, so the, the account, I mean, the group made it, but it's yeah. empty. Just it didn't sync strange. any members. Okay. Because, well, I don't think it's necessarily strange because I, my assumption is that it only shows members, like it translates, it says, okay, we're going to take all your AD members, you're going to move them, and then now it's adding Azure AD members to Azure AD groups in yeah. Azure. Mm -hmm. And if it's not syncing the group, then it probably can't add it to your Correct. group. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's no, my that guess. Sense. I don't know if you guys have seen that before, but I think the takeaway should be stay away from nested groups. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think we can emphatically say that enough. Yeah. Nested Do we want to groups, while they're fantastic, they will cause problems when troubleshooting and trying to remediate problems. And so Steve, I mean nope. We all know why, but explain explain why uh, trying to troubleshoot a nested group membership is so difficult. Because you can't just click through. Because you, it, it, there is no click through. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no there clear is. there's no clear assignment. There, there is, but it's very click heavy. You have to click a whole heap of different places, and it's all different UIs, and it becomes yeah. this this whole event. And exactly. doing it via PowerShell is recursive hell, like we had mm -hmm. with on prem ad yeah um and and sitting there and literally putting a loop inside a loop is dangerous mm -hmm. because you can get to a recursion of ridiculous depth oh yeah uh, <laughs> um but it's it's the troubleshooting so if you go and assign a nested group to a parent group that has a policy assigned you've then got to try and work out which group is assigning that policy and you mm -hmm. won't be able to see straight away because that user's not in the top level group. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's a perfect, uh, perfect example. So yeah, right. emphatically, emphatically agree. Stay away from it. It seems on paper like it's a really good way to manage, uh, manage access, but there are better ways to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So cool. Yeah. Profile status is now set to updating, um, which is exactly what we wanted to see. Um, again, this can take uh, you know a couple of couple of minutes, anywhere up to ten to fifteen to an hour. People have um, seen us do this before; they know what we're doing. I mean, it's hopefully they get it. Yeah, it's, no, but it's just so. it's it's one of those things where, um, especially when I'm uh, doing handover with with a team who's going to be managing this environment, um, getting them to understand that the things that they do in the portal have actual tangible actions, um, and that they can go there and they can watch. Oh, okay. So I'm waiting for this to be switched over to assigned. That way, there's that sort of ownership, and they know that things they're doing will will work, or not. But you know, at least they'll be able to tell where it failed. Yep. Intune yep. takes definitely. Uh, you need to have a little bit of patience, which I'm very short on a lot of the time. So it's been an adjustment, to say the least. I think this is going to be hard for me. It's it's a more incentive to get it right the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the I mean, and that, my answer to a lot of people wrong. is like, hey, this policy hasn't shown up. And I said, well, have you waited eight hours yet for the yeah. thing? You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yes, you yourself, uh, but you know, I had our, that conversation. I had, yeah. tried it multiple times and <laughs> negatory. So. And it's funny because usually they'll be like, no, I haven't. I can't get it to work. And then the next day, oh, hey, by the way, I waited and it, it worked. worked. Yeah. So yeah. I really? Just yeah. had that conversation with someone um, around. Uh, using the default uh, ADMX policies for SharePoint uh, mm. folder sync, um, it says in the document or in the you know the documentation of the policy that this can take eight hours. Yep, now, yep. when you're doing it from a brand new build, it's real fast because of the we've we've spoken about this before where you know the first initial policies uh, poll quite regularly, um, and then after that it starts slowing down, and then it's like every eight hours or whatever. Um, but if you've got an existing fleet of machines and you decide that you are going to roll out a, a SharePoint folder to sync to everyone's machine, it, it's not going to happen immediately. There are ways to make it happen immediately, but it's not relying on those policies because, unfortunately, the polling is is that slow. 
Yeah, um, I think if you want to hear more about that, talk, uh, watch our autopilot video with Mike Niehaus. He went into depth on on the, the what that cycle is, and, and they've talked why. about okay, maybe we should maybe we can you can change it, change but don't. A little bit or something. Yeah, yeah, darn. Yeah. This don't. isn't meant to be. This isn't meant to be an immediate. Everything's applied. This is meant to be an organic growing thing that you have the ability to track all the policies and make sure that your environment is to your liking. But the, the, the point that I would make is look at Config Manager. It's not an immediate technology. Mm. Or it, it's not meant to be an immediate technology. Yeah. There are scenarios where it is. But mm -hmm. content distribution and application installation and for the most part policies are not instantaneous. The computer still has to do that request. You can't sit there and say it's going to apply. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Intune's no different. That's oh, it. hey. I remembered that brain fart that I had a while back. It came back. Um, so we were talking about uh, the feature parity situation. And the, mm -hmm. the thing I was thinking of was the, um, you know, I see lots of folks asking for inventory and like, hey, why don't we have inventory? Uh, you know, we need to get our hardware inventory. We need our whatever. And you're trying to get that same level of data um, into, uh, into Intune and it's it's just a it comes back to this whole thing of like why you know what are you trying to achieve by bringing all of this data back into the console yeah and look at the data that like if you use config manager today look at the amount of data that exists there how you much of that use. are you yeah. are you yeah. actually using yeah how exactly. much of that data just sits there i mean unless you have a staff that can actually process all of that and use it I mean, most of the stuff is, is you know, you use it occasionally. Well, yeah. great. You, you do things occasionally. Don't just collect yep. it to collect it. But yeah. it's a hard do, do, organizational do change to keep away from. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I mean, the, I mean, the perfect scenario of that is if you want to capture hardware information at, at a specific point in time, write a PowerShell script, grab it, deploy yep. it out, um, throw it into a table and, and, you know, create a report. This isn't going to be something that you need to do every day. And if you're in a situation where someone's making you need to do hardware inventories every day, uh, explain to them that it's not of value. Mm -hmm. oh. If you're looking for something of value, though, log analytics. I'll yes. Like coming out with a post on that uh, coming up shortly on Sysman Squad. Ooh. Because Love the default the stuff that you get, you know, it's not all yeah. that great. Yeah, but, for sure. 